Jain everyone, my name is Nishant Singh. I'm an ex-cadet from India 145th course and also your mentor at Offices Mind. So today we'll be taking up a topic that is, you know, very much asked in the interview by the interviewing officer, specifically questions regarding the structure, equipment and the ranks. So it is very easy, koi bhot badi mushkil cheez nahi hai, but the thing is that people are either having very less information or are having confusion in these things. So I'll try here to clear it out in front of you today. All right. So what we are going to do is we are going to go in a schematic way. First, we are going to study about rank structure, about the basic structure, organizational structure of the forces, how commands work, how theater commands that are a new thing right now are coming out and working. After that, we'll be, you know, going around the equipment that the Indian Army basically uses. So why does the interviewing officer ask you such questions? See, the fundamental of interviewing officer asking you such questions in the interview is very simple. He just wants to know that if you are aware enough or do you have enough interest that you go ahead and study, read all the information that is provided in the public domain by the forces. All right. So we'll be starting now. All right. So here we'll follow a very schematic uh, way. First, we'll be going around ranks. After ranks, we'll go to the structure. After structure, we'll go to commands. And once you are done with this, your one most asked question is already covered. Now, after you are done with this fundamental, what we are going to do is we'll go ahead. We'll go ahead with the same. What we'll do? What we will do after we are done with this, we will try to understand theaters. After we are done with the theaters, we'll move on to equipment. I hope I'm very clear. So without wasting any time, let's start. All right. So rank structure of Indian Army. See, Indian Army is a hierarchy based organization. Discipline, seniority. It is very important part of the forces. So we'll be starting not only by the officers ranks, but all the ranks that are there. So first rank you can see here, Sepoy. That is Sepoy in English and Sipahi. That is in the usual Hindi mein jo bhi conversation we do. Usme we use Sipahi. All right. So after Sipahi, Sipahi is basically the general duty. It is the general duty. It is the first rank for a OR. What are OR? See, there are three categories in the Indian Army rank system. That is officers, that is officers, NCOs, here JCOs, and in the end is ORs. So ORs are other ranks. So Sepahi, then Lance Nayak. So what is the symbol? How would you know if a person is a Lance Nayak? You would look on the you will look here on the uniform. They would be having this on the uniform. So you will be understanding that this is Lance Nayak. After that comes Nayak. Then comes Havaldar. Now till here this. These are specifically if I take, take these three ranks first of all. Nayak, Lance Nayak and Sipai. These are nothing but ORs. That is other ranks. All right. Havaldar, Quartermaster Havaldar. See, Quartermaster Havaldar is not basically a rank. Uh, Quartermaster Havaldar is an appointment. It is an appointment provided to a senior Havaldar. All right. To provide it to a senior Havaldar. So that is one thing we have to understand and take into consideration. All right. Now, these two ranks or I would say this is NCO here NCO would be lying now you see Nayab Subedar, Subedar, Subedar Major these are the three ranks that we see are JCOs now what are JCOs? JCOs are Junior Commissioned Officers JCOs are Junior Commissioned Officers they are people who had been recruited into the forces by other ranks and by other ranks, I mean from general duty, Sipahi Bharti, after which they have climbed up the ladder. They have served for a very good time, 20, 25 years. And after that, they have reached this ranks. For, let's say, if a person is a Havaldar, he might have served for more than 17 years, right? Similarly, when 21 to 25 years of service, they'll reach 
सुबेदार मेजर ना सुबेदार मेजर इज द हाइएस्ट जेसीओ रैंक इन अट और इन एन इंडियन आर्मी स्टैब्लिशमेंट द हाइएस्ट जेसीओ रैंक इज सुबेदार मेजर After this, we start on to the officers' rank. So these are the ranks we are very, very much interested about, right? So first of all, we'll come to lieutenant. Now, don't go on to the spelling. It is not pronounced lieutenant in India specifically. You would see in certain Western uh, armies and various other nations' armies, like they call them lieutenants. Now the thing is that it is just about the pronunciation. Like you would have seen uh, Hollywood movies. Usme the thing is lieutenant. so earlier there also used to be a rank called second lieutenant second left lieutenant if i remove this one star it would become second lieutenant but now this rank was uh, repealed now no second lieutenant rank is there lieutenant is there so this is the first rank after serving for let's say 2 years you get promoted to captain overall service when reaches 7 years you become a major and so on so major is there so major basically takes up the role of an adjutant it could be a captain who is an adjutant as well but basically major is there company commanders so major now right now we are talking about young officers these are young officer ranks after that we'll go to the lieutenant colonel colonel now you would have seen lieutenant colonel and colonel lieutenant colonel is basically second in command of the unit that is there uh, after which second in command of the battalion colonel is the commanding officer after that the first commander rank the first commander rank that is brigadier pops up after that major general is there then lieutenant general then general and field marshal is a ceremonial rank it is a lifelong ceremonial uh, rank that is given to a general for his exemplary service during war time all right okay we'll be moving ahead now all right so as we have talked about the rank structure now we can go through about the command structure so what happens is let's say let's start from the very beginning so first of all the thing is section see question puchega interviewing officer will ask you questions but he will not go so deep into the command thing yes but when we talk about the rank structure he might ask you very deeply about the rank structure but how do you denote the rank all right what rank is the first commander rank right usually at what ranks do company commanders are uh, placed so th these are the kind of the commanding officer is of what rank so he would ask you all these questions and you should be able to answer these questions even if he asks you questions about non officer ranks you should be able to answer right all right coming again sections now what is a section section is the sabse choti ikai of forge ठीक है स्मॉलेस्ट कंपोनेंट सबसे छोटी इकाई फौज की जो होगी वो हमारा सेक्शन होगा हैज अराउंड टेन मैन इन इट ऑल राइट एंड इट इज कमांडेड बाय सेक्शन कमांडर एंड सेक्शन कमांडर इज बेसिकली ऑफ अ रैंक ऑफ हवलदार आफ्टर दैट देयर इज अ प्लाटून राइट कंप्राइजेस ऑफ थ्री सेक्शंस नाउ थ्री सेक्शंस मींस थर्टी मैन एंड इट इज कमांडेड बाय अ जेसीओ राइट देन कम्स अ राइफल कंपनी देन बटालियन so from here onwards you should be very very clear about the rank structure that first there will be battalion slash regiment we move up it will be brigade theek hai so it will be comprising of three battalions and certain support elements what are support elements these are core of engineers are there electronics and uh, electronics and mechanical engineers are there so they these are those corps which are helping the combat forces to take care of their operations of the task provided and move on smoothly all right so after this a brigade is there what after the brigade after brigade div is there div is called division div is called division after the division now brigade as the name suggests is commanded by a brigadier is commanded by a brigadier battalion is basically commanded by a colonel right it is commanded by a colonel this is commanded by a brigadier a div is basically commanded by a major general now div becomes a very big formation after div we move on to core 
Now core as you see is commanded by a lieutenant general. It comprises of three to four divisions. And after that operational commands. इसकी हम बात अभी करेंगे. After we are done with the basic structure, we'll be talking about the commands only, right? So it is commanded by a GOC. What is GOC? It is a general officer commanding. So that is also called a core commander. So it is of a rank. The rank of a GOC is lieutenant general. See, you have to understand GOC is not a rank. GOC or core commander is an appointment, whereas lieutenant general is the rank, right? It comprises of three to four divisions. And after that comes, after the core comes operational command. Now you see there are six operational commands. It is commanded by a GOC in C, that is general officer commander in chief. That is the rank of lieutenant general only. And army training command is there. We'll also talk about the training command. There are further more formations like uh, static formation area is there, training establishments are there, sub areas are there, uh, category A, category Bs are there. We don't have to talk about all this very much because we are not expected to know all of this. If you know, well enough. If you don't, not a problem. Moving ahead. See, these are the various commands and their insignias. All right. So there are total seven uh, commands in the Indian Army and every uh, command has a GOC in C that resides over into the headquarters. Now that means there are seven command headquarters all over the nation. All right. So what do we see? That northern command is in Udhampur, western command in Chandi Mandir, southern command in Pune, training command in Shimla, central command in Lucknow, eastern command in Kolkata, and southwestern command in Jaipur. So let's count them. They all become a total of seven commands. Okay, this is what you have to remember. Okay, you can pause the video and take a screenshot of this. This is something you have to remember ki konsa command kaha present hai. Konsa command kaha present hai. And you also have to remember ki ji inka jo GOC in C hoga, wo kya rank hoga. Kis rank ka officer bethega as a GOC in C, that is Lieutenant General. You should be aware of this much. You have to keep it in mind. All right. So this is current formation. Now this is a new concept that the uh, armed forces are following right now that are integrated theatres. Now what are integrated theatre commands? Right. So what the, it is more of the synergy that is being provided by correlating many commands or correlating many components, correlating combat and support components together so that effective operational capabilities can be achieved. That has to be kept in mind. Right, the existing single service command to fewer joint commands has to be established, and that is being established, and some have been already established by the forces. So, see, integrated Western Theatre Command. Western Theatre is, see, you see all this area, all this area has been considered into the Western Theatre. Abhi, Western Theatre mein, what is the threat? Or what, what we say that what is our neighbor here? That is Pakistan. So it is Jammu and Kashmir, Punjab, Rajasthan and Haryana. So this is all integrated Western Theatre Command. Right? So the subsumes of this are Western Southern, Southwestern Command. You see, Jaipur has Southwestern Command. Southern Command is in Pune. Western Command is in Chandi Mandir. Tino Command mil gaye. Tino Command integrate ho gaye. So it becomes integrated Western Theatre Command. Right? Easy. Now you look at this area. All of this area. Here is China. All right. So you see Ladakh, Himachal Pradesh and Uttarakhand is there. Northern command in Udhampur. Central command. Central command is in Lucknow. So now this area has been subdued in it. Right. Now comes the integrated Eastern Theatre. Similarly, this area. It has Eastern Army, Eastern Army command is there. And Eastern Air Command is also there. We will be talking about the Air Force as well as Navy in next two videos. So that... It does not become very hectic for you to do everything into a single video. All right. Now let's go for Andaman and Nicobar command. Andaman and Nicobar command has all integrated all three components of the forces. Right. Only joint command created in 2003. All right. Integrated Southern Theater command. Southern Theater would be all of this. All of this. It would have Southern command. That is in Pune again. Southern Naval command. Western Naval command. Eastern Naval command. Am I very very clear? Okay. Now integrated air command and logistics command is also there. We will be talking about these very thoroughly in the 
next video now uh, moving forward please take a screenshot of this so that you can certainly revise and you can keep going iske upar so that you can remember it you can imbibe it into yourself all right see now as we have gone through the rank structure so if we have to recall the rank structure it would be in officers it would be lieutenant captain major lieutenant colonel colonel brigadier major general lieutenant general and general and in the non officer ranks or the other ranks if we call them it would be sipahi lance nayak nayak havaldar nayab subedar 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 major right easy all right after that we learned about the commands that there are total seven number of commands all right central command in lucknow western command in jandi mandir your northern command in udhampur south western command in jaipur southern command in pune training command in shimla and one command that we are missing one one command that we are missing is in eastern command that is in kolkata so you have to remember everything so if the interviewing officer asks you regarding any of this you should be able to answer this shows that yes the chap is very very interested into the forces he has the basic knowledge about the forces he reads a lot he has the basic level of awareness now one question that becomes very difficult for you people right at my time of ssb when i was there the same question was asked from me that name any five weapon systems of the indian army right and from other people my other uh, mates who were you know appearing for ssb with me many of them were not able to answer this to ye ek bahut hi uh, bada topic nahi hai this is a very easy kind of a topic and you can easily go through it but the fundamental is that you have to just take a little amount of pain and it is not even pain it is certainly interest if you want to get into the forces weapon systems are something that inter should interest you all right so we'll be going around the weapon systems of the indian armed forces i'll not go around all the systems or very technicalities of the systems i'll be simply telling you basics of these systems and you will be able to understand and name them all right so first of all let's go for the small arm system now the question arises bhai kya hote hain small arm systems so small arm systems jo naam se pata chal raha they are small ammunition and arm systems which are basically carried by the troops into the battlefield right okay so let's move forward now with regard c so you could see very you know fantastic pictures of weapon systems i'll be telling you regarding these see this is the insas rifle that you can see in front of you it is the insas 5.56 mm rifle this is a very prominent weapon system what is the full form of insas is something that is also asked very much in the interview by the interviewing officer so insas is indian small arm system all right it is indian national small arm systems what insas takes care what what insas was this is a weapon system that was indigenously manufactured and designed in india and it was the major and the main service rifle of the forces for a very very long long year but now what is taking place abhi gaadi hum chalate hain bahut saal ek achhi gaadi humne chala li after that we replace it because new technology is coming new you know materials are coming lightweight weapon systems are coming more efficient and effective weapon systems with more range are coming right with more and more attachments like what are attachments you see this is a fore grip that is being attached this is a side rail this is a upper rail this is a sight that is being attached so these are something that make the weapon system more efficient right whereas in the insa system you don't find it so to replace this what we are doing we are bringing in good and good better and better weapon systems from everywhere around the world so you see this is a ak this is a ak's modified variant indian modified variant all right this is something that is also being used by the indian armed forces specifically in the valley area in kashmir area as well as in the northeastern uh, area to fight terrorism for counter terrorism operations very effective weapon very strong weapon very powerful weapon all right so have, we have studied about insas we have known about ak47 akm now let's come on to this now you see this is the newest Uh, of the rifles that indian army has equipped these are the six or
these are the six or rifles all right so these are very capable rifles very efficient good range bigger ammunition so these are having 7.62 into 51 mm ammunition this is a big ammunition whereas here if you see it is 7.62 into 39 mm this is not very important the ammunition size is not very important but you should know that we have procured six or from united states which may news aayi thi bahut sari tumne padhi bhi hogi ki 75000 rifles ka order diya gaya hai so this is being so to replace insas we are using ak ak is from russia and whereas from here you are using six or so do variant se hum insas ko totally hata rahe hain now you see this system this is a karl gustav rcl it is also called the recoilless gun sometimes but this is rcl what we we are going to call it is the karl gustav rcl that is there all right this is the these are the different type of ammunitions you can use with it there are uh, ap ammunitions are there armor piercing there are he ammunitions there are, there are highly explosive uh, armored piercing for different various purposes you use various ammunitions very efficient no recoil as well as a very convenient weapon system to use also you can fire atgms certain amount of atgms that are modified for the karl gustav what are atgms now so guys atgms are anti tank sorry atgms are anti tank guided missiles basically you should have you would have uh, heard of the name nag helena so these are certain indian variants of atgms that is anti tank guided missiles next now if the interviewing officer asks you name five small arms that are being used by the indian armed forces so you can name sir insas was there currently also in use but is being replaced ak's are there ak47 akms six or are there sir being uh, procured from united states of america the karl gustav rcl is also there sir various motor systems are being used sir then we come on to tank systems now armored core basically possesses tanks the armored core possesses tanks it is their responsibility to fight this mechanized warfare because time is changing and more and more technology is being induced into the armed forces nowadays so see the tank you see in front of you right now right here is the arjun main battle tank mark 2 so i'll be stating certain names please remember them arjun mark 1 arjun mark 2 t90 bhishma t72 this is being decommissioned soon isko hata rahe hain because again it is a very old time tank other than all of these you could also name that there are mechanized infantry vehicles like infantry uh, vehicle are there infantry combat vehicles are there icvs are there bmps are there that is sarat i'll show you the picture bmp2 sarat infantry combat vehicles are there all terrain vehicles are there armored personal carriers are there apcs so these are the certain weapon systems that are being used by the armored core you can take a screenshot and you can go around all of these please remember at least these many names so that you understand and you know what is it about this is the icv that is infantry combat vehicle bmp2 k sarath all right these two tanks are indigenous india made these two are russian tanks
All right. VMPs are also Russians. And APCs we have uh, like we have procured them from both Russia as well as USA. Keep it in mind. This is a BMP. See, uh, best example to understand is कि आप लोग snippets देख लो जो Republic Day parade होती है हर साल की उसके. You will get to see and hear names of all the uh, tanks, missile systems, mechanized infantry systems. You radar systems, you will understand yourself and you will get to see it. So, go on to YouTube, find Republic Day snippets, from there you can find them. Very easy method and very convenient method and would, you would find it very interesting as well. Alright? Alright, moving up. Now, this looks like a tank. I know that this looks like a tank, but it is not a tank. Now, we are going to start about artillery. So, artillery that is the top khana. So they carry all the big guns. Okay, all the big guns are there that artillery is carrying. So artillery's basic aim is to triangulate the enemy and fire on the enemy, providing support to the soldiers and the combatants in the battlefield and take out the enemy from far away. Alright, so this is a K9 K9 Thunder that you called. So it is one of the uh, newest weapon systems of the armed forces. And also a very effective one because it is a self-propelled artillery gun. Self-propelled artillery gun that it can move around by its own. It does not have to be get carried. Like you must have heard the names of Havitzers. Havitzers are there. Bofors are there. Indian field gun is there. M777 ultralight Havitzer from US. Ultralight. Havitzer is there. So all these things you have to remember. K9 is there. So all these uh, systems from artillery you have to remember. Other than that, MBRLs are there. Now you would be like, what are MBRLs? That are multiple, multiple barrel rocket launch systems mbrls are there i'll show you the mbrl this is the pinaka mbrl system one of the most effective in the world indigenous india made so this is the pinaka mbrl systems you see there are multi barreled because it is carrying lot of rockets in it and it can fire in the battlefield very effective weapon system all right carried by the artillery even the brahmos system the Brahmos missile systems are also carried by the Indian Army and they are also under the command of artillery. I hope you guys understand. Alright, so this was everything that we had to do today. I guess it was very interesting for you. You guys getting educated about weapon systems of the Indian Armed Forces, the commands, the rank structures, the uh, army hierarchies. Alright, everything you got to understand right there is one more thing that is left i guess i'll cover it the see you see here the uh, there are various arms and services that are there like the fighting arms that is the infantry mechanized infantry and armored corps infantry hote hain pedal sainik those regiments like the rajputana rifles are there jat regiment is there gorkhas are there dogra etc these come into all mechanized uh, now these come into infantry right now if we if we talk about mechanized infantry these are which carry bmps infantry combat vehicles right uh, all terrain vehicles armored personnel carriers that we have studied in the previous section bmp2 sarath and everything armored core is the tanks so we have studied this also now regiment of artillery we have studied about the artillery right okay Army Aviation Corps is the corps that provides air support. Air support as if medical evacuation, casualty evacuation, uh, providing uh, support as if carrying artillery guns like M777 Habitzer is there and everything. So these are the flyboys of the army. So their job is to go and fly logistics, support as well as 
important material to the boys fighting on the ground core of engineers again support arms their basic job is to you know go around uh, ieds and uh, disposal of all the demolition work that is to happen in the forces specifically clearing out way for the infantry to go ahead formulating bridges if required you should have seen that folding bridge जो पानी होता है तो पानी के ऊपर से ब्रिज डाल देते हैं फ्लोटिंग ब्रिजेस देयर फोल्डिंग ब्रिजेस देयर सो दैट टैंक्स एंड बिग व्हीकल्स एंड ऑल द लॉजिस्टिक्स कैन पास दैट इज व्हाट कोर ऑफ इंजीनियर्स डज कोर ऑफ आर्मी एंड डिफेंस एडीज वर्क इज टू प्रोटेक्ट द स्काइज बेसिकली इफ अ यू सी इफ द फोर्सेस आर फाइटिंग ऑन द ग्राउंड इफ दुश्मन का एयर सपोर्ट कम्स ए एडी टेक्स इट डाउन सिंपल एज दैट एंड देन कम द कोर ऑफ सिग्नल्स एज द नेम इज सजेस्टिंग सिग्नल्स देयर जॉब इज टू प्रोवाइड secure encrypted safe communication so that all the operations can be executed at all levels then comes the services services job is to provide services to the forces so that they can take or uh, take on the responsibilities army medical core is there army dental core is there army postal services core is there army education core is there army service core is there the core of eme is there core of military police that is the cmp is there RVC that is the remount and veterinary core is there defense service core is there right uh, that this is wrong basically defense service core uh, it must have been defense security core army ordnance core is there jag is there jag's job is to basically take all the all the uh, law related things all the uh, court marshals court of inquiries that take place military nursing services there core of military intelligence is there and pioneers are there right so this was all for today i hope you guys enjoyed the session and we'll meet again with a similar video on navy as well as air force till the time stay tuned subscribe to officers mind as well as go follow our instagram thank you